right guys, I do believe there's only one major bit of naffness left with the CC01 and that would be the rear suspension. It wobbles, it rattles, it bends, not nice at all. And whoever decided to mount the dampers to the ends of the lower links really wasn't thinking. As the axle moves up and down the link rotates, effectively making the suspension a sloppy mess. Join fact to the rescue, or is that G-Made? I've seen a suspension kit listed as both, and if you look, both are located at the same address. If you go to the websites for Junfac and G-Made, they both have the kit listed as well. A bit confusing. This packet has a Junfac label, so we'll consider this a Junfac product. In the packet, there are three bags. In the first is the hardware for the suspension links, some cap heads, metal balls, grub screws and washers. In the second are the machined aluminium parts, and the third has the skid plate with its own little hardware pack. This is of course the complete pack, you can get it with the link set on its own if you don't want the skid. And you can change your mind later though, as the skid is available too. Right, building! As always, open up the bags and pour the contents into some pots. It might be a good idea to separate the screws from the other bits so they're quicker to find later. And since the skid bits are essentially a separate kit, keep its hardware separate for now. Might as well do a little artsy shot so you can see what should be in the kit. The quality of most of the parts is quite excellent. The ball ends are nice and chunky, the balls are all metal, there's some nylock nuts, proper grub screws, the quality of the screws is adequate for the most part, except the shorter countersunk hexes were off centre and too big for a 2mm allen key. Pretty sure this is poor manufacturing tolerances. You might get away with an imperial key that's slightly bigger, but you'd be better off checking the kit before you want to put it together and source some replacements for anything unusable. The skid plate is lovely, a perfect fit with a nice even finish, which of course will end up getting scratched up after the first run. Right, we'll start with the links. Simple enough to put together, start by putting a grub screw about halfway into one of the ball ends. Don't overdo them though, as a grub screw can distort the hole for the ball. Next, pop a ball into the ball end with a pair of pliers. So far so good. Now put a smear of blue Loctite on the exposed threads and screw the ball end into the link. Do them up so they're nice and snug. Do them up evenly until the ends are correctly aligned. The long link should have the ball ends at 90 degrees to each other, the short link should be level. Keep going until you have a nice set of four. Now to liberate the axle. First it's wheels off so we can access all the bits. Then we need to remove the four screws holding the lower links on the axle and chassis. Remove the screws on the ends of the links holding the dampers on. Pop the upper links off. Loosen the grub screw on the drive shaft universal and slide it from the axle. Lastly, remove the two brass ball ends from the chassis. And now we can focus on the axle. To fit the aluminium mounts, we first need to remove the two end screws on the front of the axle, the ones on the pinion side. Now, we'll only be showing you the assembly of one side, as the other side is just a mirror image, so I'm sure you can figure it out. Grab one of the aluminium mounts and offer it up to the axle. It should be a good fit. If it isn't, you're probably trying to fit it to the wrong end. Pop one of the shorter M3 screws, a M3 by 14 capper, into the recessed hole in the end and do it up nice and snug. Next up, grab one of the long button head screws and insert it through the aluminium mount and through the axle. Pop a washer on the end, followed by one of the short links and a nylock nut. Do it up so it's just nice and snug. I also put a washer under the screw head in the video, but later I found a better spot for it. Long links now, these go on the outside face of the lug on the aluminium mount with a single hole. Pop an M3 by 18 cap head through the ball end, through the lug and secure it with a nylock nut. You might notice the ball ends are a bit stiff, but don't worry they'll wear in quite quickly and free up. On the dampers, the Tamiya ends need those ill-fitting self-tap shoulder screws, which of course won't fit our nice aluminium mounts. So, we need to swap them for the ball ends included with the link set. There's only one minor problem, however. The ball ends effectively shorten the damper by 5mm or so. We'll deal with this later. In the meantime, pop the spring off, grab the shaft with a pair of pliers and a bit of card so we don't damage anything, and unscrew the Tamiya end. 
Then fit one of the Junfac ball ends in place, refit the spring and retainer and pop in a ball. Back to the axle, pop one of the M3 by 18 cap heads through the outer hole in the damper lug on the mount, then slide the ball end of the damper over and secure with one of the nylock nuts. I suggest the outer holes as I found the angle of the damper interferes with the axle if you use the inner. With all that assembled, and of course the other side matching, it's time to install it on the chassis. Start by putting the axle in roughly the right position, and popping the top of the dampers over the ball ends on the chassis. Now line the upper links up with the front mounting posts, pop an M3 by 14 through the ball end, pop a washer on the end of the screw, and screw it in. Do the same on the other top link. The lower links get attached to the same holes as the stock ones. If you weren't using the skid, you would just use the remaining cap heads to fit them. The skid, however, needs a couple of extra steps. First, we remove the two rear screws on the front skid plate. Offer up the skid and install two of the M3 by 12 countersunk screws on the front. This bit is a bit tricky. Roughly line up the ball ends with the hole, slightly lift the skid to give yourself some working room, and carefully place one of the spacers between the ball end and the skid. A pair of pliers helps a lot here. When it's all roughly lined up, run one of the M3 by 25 countersunk screws through. You might need to jiggle things a bit to get a clear path. Don't do the screw up all the way yet, leave it a couple of millimetres so you can still lift the skid for getting at the other ball end and spacer. When it's all nicely lined up, do up the four skid plate screws nice and snug. So, that's the basic install complete, but nothing is ever simple as it should be. Remember the dampers are now a little shorter than they should be, which gives us this little issue. The lower links hit the chassis well before the damper bottoms out, so we'll be needing to do a little suspension lift. The classic bodge is to put one of the bushes from the CCA1 kit under the top mount. This is a bit naff, and doesn't give enough lift to make up for the shorter damper. You could use something a bit thicker, like a large nut and a longer screw. It'll work, but again it's a bit naff. The mount isn't properly supported. What we really want is a nice little lift block. This one was made with four layers of some 2mm ABS offcuts, cut to 8 by 16 by 8 mm Then a 3mm hole was drilled for the screw, and a 2mm hole for the locating pin on the mount. Simple enough to make, and makes for a nice secure mounting point. When you have everything moving nicely, with no binding, it's time to pop the wheels back on and admire your work. It all does its thing with no fuss, no wobbles, no slop, just as it should be. Great stuff. Right, let's test out the makeshift articulation ramp, otherwise known as some aluminium strip leaning on a clod tyre. I'll stop just as it becomes a trike, which is right about there. So, that's 5 centimetres, or near enough, 2 inches, which for a CC01 without long dampers or some sort of revolver damper mount isn't bad at all. Some of that will be because it's a few years old and the springs have softened a bit. Either way, it's quite doable for anyone with a CC01 chassis truck. And do you want to know the best bit after upgrading the steering and rear suspension? It doesn't rattle anymore! <laughs> Other than the remaining play in the front suspension, which might be fixable with the GPM front suspension parts. But having said that, after experiencing the fit of the GPM steering, I'm not too sure. Anyway, the truck feels like a much higher end model now, it's really rather good. Just got to give it a test to see if the skid is worth the reduced ground clearance. I'm thinking it will slide over things instead of getting hung up, but I won't know for sure until I get it outside. That's about it, there's still plenty more to do on the chassis, wheels, tyres, front suspension, maybe a winch servo. Then we've got the body mods to have a think about. There's been some good suggestions in the reply to the first video. Research has been done, plans are afoot. As always, thanks for watching. I think by the time I've edited this, there should be a build guide on rcmojo.com, possibly with a printable PDF. Hopefully it will be useful, since Junefac don't supply any instructions. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button, and if you want to be told when the next part goes up, you can always subscribe. Thanks guys! <laughs>